live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in the capital of Hungary. I hope everybody has had a great week and is uh, off to a good weekend, staying healthy, staying productive, and uh, industrious. Hi, Jiwan. Hi, Prashant. Hi, Kyber. Hi, Fikret. Prince Singh, nice to see many students in the class already. That's fantastic. Uh, students, in this class, we are looking at an IELTS Task 1 uh, writing task. It's a horizontal bar chart. Uh, this is specifically for academic IELTS. So one of the key differences between academic and general is the Task 1. In fact, it's a completely different type of essay. Um, task 1 in uh, the general, it's a narrative uh, piece of writing or a narrative essay, meaning you have to write a letter, a story, an email. Um, as where in uh, the academic IELTS, task one, you have to look at a chart or a diagram. You have to analyze it. This is an expository piece of writing, okay? Uh, especially for those students who are planning to go to university, Make sure that you're familiar with the four standard types of writing in literature. This is not just in English. This is in every language, every nationality. So there are four standard types of writing in literature. Okay, and this involves all different kinds of writing. Um, they are one, uh, persuasive. Persuasive means you want to convince your reader of an idea. This is task uh, two in both academic and general. Okay, and um, the reason why task two is persuasive, persuasive meaning to convince, uh, is because a lot of writing in business, in university, in research, in science is persuasive writing. Your goal is to convince your reader of your research, your business idea. So understand the principles of persuasive writing. Hopefully you learned some of that in school. Okay. Um, the other type of writing is called expository. Okay, expository writing, uh, expose and explain an idea. That's what that means. Um, expository writing is task one in um, the academic. And then another type of uh, the standard four is narrative. Okay, narrative is where you tell a story. Okay, so it's storytelling. This is task one in the general. Okay, the first one was task one in the academic. And then uh, kind of the king of them all, uh, the one that uh, is used in all forms of writing is what's called descriptive. And as the word implies, it describes. Okay. Um, so uh, remember these, okay? And persuasive is, of course, as I mentioned, um, seeks to convince the audience. Okay. So in literature, those are your four standard types of writing. Uh, and uh, it's very important as a writer to understand these four, understand the technique, the structure of these kinds of writing. And uh, also it's useful to know for your reading. So uh, when you're reading uh, a passage, a paragraph, a magazine article, you should right away recognize the style of writing and what kind of voice is being used and so on. Okay. So... If you haven't heard these words clearly before, if you haven't heard persuasive, expository, narrative, descriptive, I highly, highly recommend you go online and you do a little bit of research to learn the fundamentals of these four different types of writing, okay? So it's very important, not just for the IELTS, but for as a life skill, okay? So uh, make sure. So, of course, there's a lot of information on this, but uh, you don't need to uh, learn everything. That could take a lifetime, but make sure uh, to know the fundamentals, the fundamental principles of each of these uh, four types of writing. Okay? All right. So, having said that, students, um, 
Today we're looking at an expository essay, specifically task one, specifically horizontal bar chart. Uh, this lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there. Uh, where we definitely describe for you all the different kinds of writing and what's involved. And for general IELTS, uh, check us out at gieltshelp.com, where, of course, we have lots of videos and examples uh, for letter writing, email writing, and the likes. Uh, so you can visit us there. Uh, to make sure you're on the right pages, uh, aehelp.com. It looks like this blue background. Click that big red button uh, to join our premium package there. And for the general version, uh, it's the green background at gltshelp.com. Click that big red button to join us there. Uh, here I'll be uh, super cool today. Give you a code R4TYJ. We'll get you a 20% uh, discount from the premium package. So you can use that on the uh, websites. When you click the join now, you can use it at the coupon. It'll say use coupon and you'll see that. Okay, um, cool. So if you have a question, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. I will gladly um, uh, answer that. Kyber, that's going to be later in the year. I see that question. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, today, again, task one. Tomorrow, we'll have question and answer session for members, and we'll have a new reading passage for everyone tomorrow at this time. So... Um, here we go with this task one. This task one was requested by one of our channel members, uh, I think last week or maybe the week before. Uh, first steps first, let's read the question carefully. So IELTS task one writing, you should spend 20 minutes on this task. The bar chart below shows the top 10 countries uh, for production and consumption of electricity in 2014. Uh, summarize the uh, information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Okay, great. So it's kind of very standard. Write at least 150 words, okay? So to get a task completion score, you have to write at least 150 words. Again, just a reminder that most band 7 to 9 essays will be closer, if not a bit over uh, 200 words. Okay, so um, there is no maximum word limit, but there's a minimum. If you write less than 150 words, you start to lose marks for your task completion. Okay, all right. Okay, um, so uh, yeah, Kyber, this does come from a past exam. So this was a question on a test in the last few years. Uh, let's take a look at the chart. Hopefully it'll be nice and clear for you. I haven't tested this, but uh, you should be able to see it. I'll even expand it a bit like that. Okay, um, so here you have the rank of the country. Uh, here you have the amount of electricity. And then you have a dark bar, and then you have a light bar. And here we have China, United States, Russia, uh, Japan, India, Canada, France, Brazil, Germany, uh, and the Korean Republic. And then here we have production in billions of kilowatts. And then uh, here we have consumption in billions of kilowatts. So dark gray uh, production, light gray consumption. That's the um, way that it looks for the um, uh, academic IELTS paper-based test. Okay, there's no colors, right? Okay, so um, let's see. I see somebody saying it, the volume is low. I think it's probably on your side. My volume is quite high on my side, so use a headset, turn up the volume. But if it's low for anybody else, let me know, okay, if you're having trouble hearing, yep. Okay, um, so what is the first step? Can anybody tell me what the first step is in task one? You should always start with task one. It should be easier than task two. Um, so what is the first step in task one? What should you do first, okay?
Okay, so Kyber says paraphrase, Terrell says paraphrase, uh, and then Kyber says and give details. Yeah. So the first paragraph is what's called the overview, which uh, often students think is the second paragraph after the introduction, but um, the overview is the introduction. The overview and the introduction, it's the same idea in an expository essay. Okay, so the overview has two elements, as many of you are explaining to me. So number one, you paraphrase the question uh, plus give more detail. Okay, so uh, and the more detail you give using the graph, of course. All right, so just to give you a very quick, uh, simple um, example of this. So the, here it says the bar chart. Okay. When it says the bar chart, in this case, it's a horizontal. It's called a horizontal bar chart because the bars are going sideways. Um, when they're going up and down, it's a vertical bar chart, which is more common. So this way, um, what you can do to give more detail is just immediately do this, the um, horizontal or this horizontal bar chart. Okay. And then what we mean by paraphrasing is using different words, okay? Now, uh, students, don't use the word below, okay? Um, because in essay writing, it's weird uh, to talk about the location of pictures on a piece of paper, especially if a person's not looking at it. So don't paraphrase below. Um, shows, there are lots of different ways to say the word shows. So the horizontal bar chart depicts, okay, D means out, picked, coming from picture. This is a verb which paraphrases show in this case. So the horizontal bar chart depicts, okay. And I see lots of um, answers coming up, so I'll read some of the answers from uh, our uh, students and members, and then I'll do my own paraphrasing, okay. So... Uh, Seni, you're going into the analysis. You don't want to do that. You're way jumping the gun, and it's not going to get you good band scores either because you're missing some very important key information that you're going to see uh, later on. Okay, so um, so don't jump the gun. Go step by step here. Let's focus on the overview. Okay. Uh, Samuel Sadir says the given horizontal bar chart depicts the top 10 countries based on the amount of current um, produced and consumed in billions of kilowatts per hour during the year 2014. Uh, nice uh, use of details there with the kilowatts, uh, the year 2014, Samuel. Um, instead of current, I, it's okay. Current's not a terrible paraphrase, Samuel, but the word power, power is a better paraphrase for electricity, okay? Uh, Karen, this would not be a pillar chart. A pillar chart would be more of a, a vertical bar chart, but we don't use that so much. I do understand it, but we don't use that so much, at least not that I know of, okay? Um, Jiwan Kaur says the following horizontal bar graph reveals the data about consumption and production of electricity in top 10 countries in the year 2014. Okay, good. So uh, there's some paraphrasing there and some detail. Uh, Zahab Metra says the horizontal bar graph illustrates the production and consumption of power among the top 10 countries in 2014 and the units are measured in kilowatts per hour. Yeah, and you don't need to repeat that, Zahab, because it applies to both. So avoid repetition. Uh, best countries is um, a little bit strange. It's unclear what best means there. Okay. Hassan Sadiq, the chart depicts a list of top 10 countries for the amount of uh, production and consumption of electricity in 2014, uh, where the units are measured in billions of kilowatts per hour. Very good. Okay. So those are the right kinds of um, paraphrasing. So the horizontal uh, bar chart depicts uh, 10 uh, countries from across the globe, which were the top producers 
and consumers of electricity in 2014. The data is given in billions of kilowatts per hour. Okay, sure, that works. And uh, it's a small k, kilowatts per hour. Okay, uh, so that works. That's the start of it. Now, um, as I said, there's two parts to the overview. Okay, so this is just the first part. So all I did here was use the question, do a bit of paraphrasing, add a little bit of detail. Okay, now the second part of the overview is the main feature. Okay, so uh, number two is give the most observable uh, feature in the graph. Okay, so uh, most observable feature and for high band scores, Think beyond just highest and lowest. Often there is more interesting uh, main feature. Okay. So think beyond that, because I know a lot of students just want to say highest and lowest, highest and lowest, but um, oftentimes there are more exciting pieces of information. So here I'm going to shrink this a bit for us so we can fit some more of this graph in here. You actually don't really need uh, to um, see the data so much. Um, I realize that it's bright. Don't worry about that. I can even darken this up for you while you're looking at this main feature. Okay, um, so uh, Amanjot says overall the highest producer is China, the lowest is, eh, not so interesting Amanjot, that's a band 6, 6.5 six, type of approach. Shiro Dijin says obviously um, most of the leader countries produced more power than they consumed, um, that's not so interesting either Shiro Jidin, okay. Uh, Samuel says at first glance it is evident that these countries uh, consume the amount of current produces greater than the current generated except for Germany. Um, eh, kind of. I think there's a more interesting data here that we can see right away. Um, when you're looking at a graph or a chart like this, uh, just look at the actual visual information. Remember that graphs and charts are designed mostly to visually show data, not necessarily the numbers. Okay. All right, Hassan Sadiq says, Germany is the only country which has consumption that exceeds production. Um, eh, it's still not the most observable main feature. Okay. Uh, Taral is my love says, clearly most of the countries given in the part chart utilized and manufactured almost the same amount of electricity. That's kind of interesting, Taral. I think that's one of the better main features so far. Um, Beck John says, at first glance, it's obvious that China and U.S. Uh, yield and utilize electricity more than the uh, other eight republics. You're halfway there, Beck John. I think that's part of the main feature. Okay, anybody else coming up with some other ideas? Let's see if anybody nails a band nine level analysis. Okay, JP, don't use the word you in this essay, okay? Um, so, when observing the information, it's clear that China and U.S. produced and consumed more than others combined. I don't know if we combine them, it would be more JP. All right, I'm not sure if anybody's stating this. Um, but what I would do here, so when you visually look at information, yeah, definitely I'm sure a lot of you are seeing that China and the United States are by far the greatest producers and consumers of electricity. Now, when I'm looking at this information in a bit more detail, for me, 
and I and I think that you can see this because I see my feedback screen here. Um, it seems to me like there's kind of three groups of um, of countries here. So it seems to me that this is kind of a group here, okay? And then this is kind of a group here as well. So for me, visually, maybe you're gonna say, Adrian, I think you're crazy. But for me, visually, this becomes apparent, okay? So it becomes apparent that China and United States by far exceeded the production and consumption of electricity of the other countries. And then as a second group, Russia, Japan, and India used a significantly higher percent and produced than the remaining five countries, which are similar. Does everybody see that? Does everybody kind of see that? Um, if you look at these, like if I draw a line down here, we can see that these countries are clearly over that line, if in not in um, uh, uh, consumption, then at least in production, right? Do you see that kind of patterning there? Okay, by being able to identify these three groupings within these 10 countries, I think that we can get into some much more interesting writing in this, um, in this essay, okay? So your uh, main feature is extremely important, okay? Uh, identifying the right main feature can easily bring your band score up in the writing section uh, because you're going to start much stronger, much better, which will create a better flow into task two and a, st a strong start like in any race uh, is definitely a good way uh, for the path to victory. Right? So one of the most important steps in the writing section of the IELTS is to start strong. And one of the most important ways to start strong is to have a really good main feature identified in the given graph. Okay? And it seems like most of you are agreeing with me and you're saying, yeah, that kind of makes sense. I can see those three groups. Okay? Um, if we actually look at the numbers, you'll see that as well. Like here you have 5,000, 5,000, 4,000, and then here you're close to the thousands, 1,000, 1,900, 800, almost 900, 700, and then here you're actually much closer to the 500s, okay? So six, five, five, four and a half, five, three, four, five, so you're much closer to the 500. So the numbers reveal that as well, okay? All right, um, so please write the main feature according to this. I already said it verbally, so now you just need to practice typing it, okay? So a few different ways to do it. I'm going to write the main feature. You do the same, then we'll compare, okay? So these three groups. So it's China, United States clearly at the top, Russia, Japan, and India in second place, okay? Russia, India, and Japan in second place. All right, so let's write this, okay? So now that we have that, I'm going to brighten up our day a little bit here and bring some more brightness back to the video, okay? So write that main feature, okay? If you don't get the countries, you don't remember them, that's fine. I'll show them that to you again, okay? All right, so at first glance, it is clear that the USA and Russia, or sorry, China, were, now it's were because it's 2014, so it's done. And we're not talking about the graph, we're talking about the actual information, right? So it is clear that USA and China were by far the greatest producers and consumers of electricity um, in the second group. I'm going to do this with a semicolon, but if you don't know how to use the semicolon, you could just use a period here. So in the second group, uh, Russia, India, and Japan used and consumed 
significantly more power than the other five countries which had similar uh, numbers. Okay, just like that. Um, there are different ways to write this. You could write it as separate sentences. You could write it in a simpler way. Uh, use your level of English, but do express this information. Okay, all right. Um, so, because what we're going to do in the next step is we're going to detail that more. We're going to explain that, compare and contrast that more. Okay. All right. Uh, so I see lots of students have written some information there. That's great. Yeah, and believe me, when you're, the examiner sees this kind of writing, they read 50 essays, uh, 45 of them say most and least, and five of them go into more details like this. The five that go into more details have a much better chance of getting those high band scores. Okay, so Jainil Gabani says, at first glance, it's obvious that all countries produced and consumed almost the same. Oh, yeah, that's from before Jainil, so that's when I didn't uh, outline this yet. So I'm going to go to the end here and see what some of you came up with. Uh, Roshni Kunte says, overall, it's evident that a massive amount of electricity were generated by China and the United States as well as Russia, India, and Japan used and consumed significantly more uh, electricity compared to the remaining five countries. Very good, Roshni. I know you ran out of space there, but you're definitely on the right path. Uh, Latha Robin says, at first glance, it is clear that USA and China are the highest uh, producers and consumers of electricity. And then Russia, Japan, and India used and consumed more power than the other five countries. Yeah, very good, Latha. You're paraphrasing what I'm uh, writing as well, so that's excellent. That's your band nine level writing, okay? Um, all right, nicely done. Uh, Beck John, same thing, well done, okay? Fantastic. So everybody's doing a good job. All right, <clears throat> now uh, what we want to do is the analysis or analyses, if you want to say plural, which is your body paragraph, okay? So uh, again, for the overview, you don't need to separate the paraphrase with the main feature because they belong together. It's the introduction uh, to your essay, okay? It's all the overview. All of this paragraph overviews uh, what you are explaining to your reader. So these do not need to be two uh, separate paragraphs. And this is what it reads like here. So this horizontal bar chart depicts 10 countries from across the globe, which were the top producers and consumers of electricity in 2014. The date, or the date, the data. Fix these typos, students, if you catch them in your exam. Okay. So the data is given in billions of kilowatts an hour. At first glance, it is clear that the USA and China were by far the greatest producers and consumers of electricity. In the second group, Russia, India, and Japan used and uh, produced, so that's another error there, always correct, used and produced, made, <laughs> significantly more power than the other five countries which had uh, similar numbers. Okay, so that's your band nine introduction, all right? Yeah, so Vishal is asking, shouldn't we separate them? Nope, and that's not the standard format. I don't know who came up with that, Vishal, but they definitely missed the standard format. The standard format for an expository essay is the same as for a persuasive. You have an introduction and then a body paragraph. The body paragraph is the analysis. The introduction is the overview. It's all of this together, okay? Uh, Rewin master or rewind master. Yeah, I hope you did well too. That's fantastic. Okay, so we have that. Now we go into the analysis, the main section here, the body paragraph, okay? Uh, before you do that, so it's a very, very important strategy here. So before you begin uh, to write, indicate um, some points for comparison, okay? 
so maybe five to six, six to eight points. Okay, six to eight points. Um, and of course, point one is your first sentence. So when you have a good um, uh, main feature, good overview, then that becomes clear. So our point number one uh, should be these two countries here, China and the United States, and this discrepancy of uh, power used and power produced, okay? Now, we don't need to go into a lot of numbers, um, just rough estimates here. So here you have 5,000 something hundred, here you have 4,000, close to 4,000. Uh, so what you want to do, again, to um, sound really professional and get those high band scores is you want to uh, express those relative differences. So what's the difference here uh, between the uh, United States and China? So what's the power use and uh, production difference? How would you say that? Okay. How would you say that? So what's the difference? 5,000 to roughly 4,000. Uh, please don't get into specific numbers like 4,099. Okay, just say approximately 4,000. All right. Yeah, so Amanjot says the difference is 1,000 billion uh, kilowatts per hour, right? So we have a difference of 1,000 billion kilowatts per hour difference. Um, what's another way to say that? Okay, don't get into, it's, it's approximately, so roughly at this point, right? 1,000 billion, what would be another way to say that? So if this is 5,000 and this is 4,000, uh, what's the difference here if we measure it in proportions? Did anybody think of proportional difference? Proportional difference would be 20%, right? So uh, China is 20% more, right? Roughly, right? 20%, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, yeah, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mohammed Azad is saying, no, it's 25% because it's 1,000. So it's 25% more, yeah, because 1,000 is 25% of the United States. So depends on what... Which, uh, which, which angle you're looking at from. So it's 25% if you're looking at it from U.S. perspective. It's 20% if you're looking at it from China's uh, perspective, right? So China's 20% more, okay? All right, uh, so that would be my point number one, is that kind of explanation. And then uh, my point number two, okay, uh, would be this. Now here, you have roughly 1,000 between these two, you have roughly uh, 900 here, and you have roughly 800 to 900 here, right? So there you have differences of about roughly 100 billion kilowatt differences, right? So that would be my point number two is the order of these countries, okay? Now, some of you are thinking, well, why don't we get into some real specifics like Russia nearly produced and consumed the exact same amount? Uh, it depends on how quickly you're able to write. That's a very small detail, okay? Uh, Russia still um, produced more than it consumed, slightly, but still more. Uh, so I would be careful to get into those real granular differences unless you're a very fast writer your plan is to teach english uh, in university and you need to show a band 8.5 or 9 if you're not doing that don't get into that level of detail just yet okay so um that's my point one point two and then here again because we have a lot of information so students keep in mind that if I write about all of this information, I will definitely run out of time and I will run out of space, okay? There's no way that I can write about all of these uh, production consumption ratios and differences. Uh, that would just be crazy. Then it would be a 500, 600 word essay, no problem. So we can't do that, okay? Be very careful when you have so much data, all right? So then we get into uh, countries six to 10, right? 
And 6 to 10, they're all hovering around 500. Canada with a bit of a higher uh, production ratio, but not a main difference. The only notable interesting thing, so my point number three would be th these five countries together with Canada at the front, Korea at the back, uh, an average of uh, 500 billion uh, kilowatts roughly between production and consumption. Now, the only interesting, unique exception here compared to all other countries, and you'd have to, you might not even see this, is Germany, where you have Germany with a slightly higher level of consumption than production. So that makes Germany a bit unique. You could mention that as a fifth or a sixth point. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so that would come at the end. And then we have time for a summary. And in the summary, uh, we can uh, uh, do a little bit more with the uh, ratio of production to consumption. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know. If, uh, if I've lost you somewhere there, then please do tell me. Okay, so we're going to go back to number one. All right. Um, and for number one, we're looking at uh, China, United States. We're looking at that 1,000 billion kilowatt difference. That's huge. That's 10 times the amount of uh, difference between the next group, right? So it's huge. So here what's interesting is this 4,000, 5,000, 20% more, okay, with the 1,000 billion kilowatt difference per hour. All right, so uh, let's do that. Let's uh, discuss that first in the analysis, okay? And then we'll come back. Hopefully you kind of memorize slightly what we were talking about here because we're going to need this information as we type along. So uh, go ahead, students. We're going to do this together. I will type the analysis. You will type the analysis. And then we will have a look at what your fellow students are writing, what I'm writing, and we'll take out the best information. And I see that there are a lot of students already off to the races for the analysis, okay? So I'll write my sentence. So um, when uh, going into more detail, China produced and consumed uh, the most power at roughly uh, 5,000 uh, billion uh, kilowatts. Please don't write all these words out because then you'll have a lot of unnecessary wording. Kilowatts uh, per hour, um, approximately 20% more than the second place uh, United States. Um, now, I could write which produced and consumed about 4,000, but I don't need to do that. An intelligent reader understands that if you say it's 5,000 billion kilowatts for production and consumption for China, it's approximately 20% more than uh, second place United States. Uh, they'll figure that out, okay? 20% of 5,000 billion is 1,000 billion, which makes this 4,000 billion. Uh, your reader is intelligent. The information is clear here, so you don't need to write that, okay? Is that clear? So you don't want to double explain, okay? Especially when you have that much information, don't double explain information. So don't say United States was 4,000 kilowatts, 1,000 less, because you're, all you're doing is explaining what you already said here. Okay, everybody good on that? No double explaining? Don't double explain. Instead, give more details for other information. Okay? The more information, the clearer the information, the higher your band score. Okay? All right. Um, Tural my love, says China was the dominant country in both production and consumption with around 5,000 billion kilowatts per hour, which was 25% higher than the amounts the USA possessed. Yeah, in that perspective, Terrell, it's 20%. If you write about the US first, which would be kind of weird, but you could, 
um, then you would say China produced 25% more than the US. So perspective to RAL is very important for the numbers, although you probably won't lose too many points for that 5% difference, okay? Uh, Sudhara Akira says, there are three stages of electricity production worldwide, list one to two, three to five, and six to 10 in the act of the chart. Um, okay, Sudhar, that's uh, still in your overview there. So good. Uh, Bekjan uh, says, going into more detail, the production and consumption of electric power for America counted uh, for more than 5,000 uh, billion kilowatts, which is 20% higher than China. Yeah, I think you um, confused China with um, uh, U.S. Bekjan because you didn't see the chart. That's fine. Just make sure you don't make that kind of mistake. Uh, later. Okay, Nig Haiman says, looking more carefully, it's clear that the Chinese and Americans generated and consumed the greatest amount uh, of power, approximately 5,000 kilowatts for China, and the U.S. under with 1,000, roughly at 4,000. Okay, Nig Haim, uh, not bad, but don't repeat what you already have in the overview. Okay. Alex Joseph says, going into deeper analysis, China is number one in supply. Uh, and demand, okay, supply and demand, Alex, at roughly 5,000 billion kilowatts per hour, approximately 25% more than second place United States, 20% more, Alex, approximately 20% more from that perspective, okay. Uh, Davinder, I'm not an economics teacher, but I do uh, study and research finance because I'm into stocks, bonds, investing, and so on as well. So good question. Yeah, uh, reading on a broad range of topics, having a broad range of interests is definitely a good attitude for success on IELTS, Davinder. So good question. Yeah, I'm not an economics teacher, but I do uh, like finance. Okay, uh, Pooja says, taking a further insight China tops the charts by producing about 5.4 thousand billion kilowatts, which is 25% more than the U.S. at 4.1 thousand billion kilowatts, while um, Russia is ranked third, producing about 1,000 kilowatts, uh, which is almost a quarter of the U.S. Okay, Pooja, that's not bad. Okay, it's not bad. Um, all right, uh, so let's uh, get into uh, the second grouping here. Um, the second grouping is Russia, Japan, and India, and we can compare that um, to the United States and China, okay? Uh, and I'm going to show you how. Uh, so uh, number two, Russia, Japan, China, or sorry, Russia, Japan, India in this order, and compare it to the first group. So compare group two to, com to group one, and then compare what's going on within group two. Okay, so grouping is a very good strategy for certain bars and graphs to have better information. Okay. Uh, the second, okay, I'm going to be a little bit silent so you can think. I don't distract you. Okay, so again, the way that you're presenting this essay is like a very sensible um, presentation uh, for PowerPoint in an economics class, Devinder. 
Okay, so when Devinder's asking, are you an economics teacher? I'm not an economics teacher, but to get that band eight, band nine, you sure have to sound like one, okay? Because remember, band nine it means an expert user of the English language, and that actually means not just an expert user of the English language, but an expert communicator using the English language, so you certainly do have to sound like you know what you're talking about, okay? All right, um, so Hassan Sadiq says the second group includes three countries, Russia, India, and Japan. Uh, they com they com their combined production is nearly 1,800 uh, kilowatts, 2,800 kilowatts in 2014, while the three countries' consumption was approximately less by about 100 billion kilowatts each. Yeah, okay, that's good. So you included that point. I haven't done that yet, Hassan, the 100 uh, kilowatt difference, but yeah, it's, it's good, okay? Amanjad says, moving further to the other countries, Russia, Japan, and India have power consumption uh, and a difference of about 100 billion kilowatts an hour. Nice, a lot of you got that in there. Good for you, okay? Rabi Arshad says, the second group in this chart shows Russia, Japan, and India are close in production and consumption. Okay, uh, about 1,000 billion kilowatts per hour. Good, okay. So this is what I wrote here. Uh, the second group in this list of 10 is rank ordered. Uh, here's a nice uh, bit of vocabulary for you, rank order. Uh, the rank order means first, second, third, fourth. So rank ordered as Russia, Japan, and India. I hope I got that right. I believe Japan preceded India. So, uh, yeah, it's below today. Yeah, I did. So Japan, then India. Okay. So the second group in this list of 10 is rank ordered as Russia, Japan, and India, supplying and demanding about or close to 1,000 billion kilowatts, roughly a quarter of that of the United States and China. Um, the, and then I can add another sentence here to get that 100 billion kilowatt difference. Um, the uh, difference between uh, these countries' electrical outputs and uses is about 100 uh, billion kilowatts per hour. Yeah, sure. Okay, great. All right, so that's the strategy, and we keep following that, okay? So uh, here for countries 6 to 10, um, Canada, France, Brazil, Germany, Korea, uh, the uh, production and consumption were uh, approximately half a thousand, right? So approximately 500 or hovering around uh, 500 uh, billion kilowatts per hour. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of 462, 455, 526. I'm just going to keep it really simple. Um, this one outlier, it's called an outlier, okay, of Germany uh, at 582. Um, I'm going to talk about that anyway, so that's fine. So now I'm going to uh, discuss that, okay. And it's five, so we've talked about the first five, so now we talk about the lower half, okay? So the third group, or lower half, and literally it's the lower half, because even on the uh, chart, it's the lower half. And I believe that's why, so uh, one interesting question that we can ask ourselves here, right, is, why is this chart a horizontal bar chart and why is it not a vertical bar chart? And I think the reason why this person chose a uh, horizontal bar chart instead of a vertical bar chart is so that we can see this top half, lower half difference. It's more visible uh, with this orientation than if this were flipped. Do you agree with me on that? Again, if I'm out to lunch, let me know. Um, but I think that the reason why this person chose to depict or show this data as a horizontal bar chart is because uh, it helps us 
when we're analyzing to see this lower half, top half uh, difference a little bit more clearly than if this chart were flipped um, vertically, right? Do you kind of see that as well, that that makes it a little bit simpler? Okay, so always be analytic, always be critical, right? That's a little hint there. Um, you should ask yourself, why is this bar chart horizontal? Why is this bar chart not vertical, right? Okay, and that's probably your answer, why? Okay, so you can see the lower half, top half separation, okay? It would be too easy if they drew a line like that, so they're not going to do that on the IELTS, okay? And also it might get confusing for some people who aren't really... Uh, going into the band seven to nine category, okay? All right, um, so uh, let's write about the lower half here, okay? So the third group or lower half of this chart shows data which hovers around uh, 500 billion kilowatts per hour production consumption with Canada at the top and South Korea at the bottom, okay? And then the last one here, uh, notably, the one outlier uh, in these countries or among these countries is Germany because it is the only nation that consumed more electricity than it produced. Okay? So that would be it. All right? Now, Notice how here, uh, I'm going to do a word count, okay? So how many words do we have so far for all this analysis and, um, okay. So, so far, if I take out analysis, body paragraph, so if I take out this part here, which is just instructions, uh, I have 200 words, okay, students? So that's a 200-word essay. That's why I said that a band nine essay will be closer to 200, Okay. And I see a lot of you writing uh, in the chat there, and it's looking good. Okay, You don't need to name it all. But notice how I have uh, 200 words here. So I'm already 30% uh, above the minimum. right? So I'm pushing that band nine. Now, Shiro Jidin says, do we need a conclusion? Not a conclusion, not a conclusion, um, but um, maybe a summary. Okay. Um, and for summary, and this is kind of like I'm guaranteeing my band nine score, uh, the summary is something interesting that we learn from the graph, which we haven't yet stated and we haven't given in the overview. Uh, watch what I do here. So uh, in summary, um, all of these countries, with the exception of Germany produced a surplus um, of 10% more power, meaning that they are self-reliant in their energy needs, okay? So now I'll have my, pretty much my exact 200 words. Uh, that's the summary, that's the interesting point uh, when we look at this, um, when we look at this uh, bar chart. Uh, we notice that every country roughly, 10% um, was maybe a bit generous, 5%, uh, okay? It's pretty close, but I would say five, anywhere from five to 10%, you might give the range. Uh, produced more electricity than they consumed, except for Germany. So all of these countries are self-reliant. That means they don't depend on other countries for power, except for Germany, which uh, we outline there.
Okay, so that's your full essay, everyone. That's your band nine. Uh, let me read it for you. Uh, notice how I didn't go into a lot of numbers. Okay, uh, so here, this horizontal bar chart depicts 10 countries from across, across the globe, uh, which were the top producers and consumers of electricity in 2014. The data is given in billions of kilowatts per hour. At first glance, it is clear that the USA and China were by far the greatest producers and consumers of electricity. In the second group, Russia, India, and Japan used and made significantly more power than the other five countries, which had similar numbers. When going into more detail, China produced and consumed the most power at roughly 5,000 billion kilowatts an hour, approximately 20% more than the second place United States. The second group in this list of 10 is rank ordered as Russia, Japan, and India, supplying and demanding about or close to 1,000 billion kilowatts an hour, roughly a quarter that of the U.S. and China. The difference between these countries' electrical outputs and uses is about 100 billion kilowatts an hour. The third group, or lower half of this chart, shows data which hovers around 500 billion kilowatts production, consumption, with Canada at the top and South Korea at the bottom. Notably, one outlier among these countries is Germany because it is the only nation that consumed more electricity than it produced. In summary, all of these countries, with the exception of Germany, produced a surplus of 5 to 10 percent more power, meaning that they are self-reliant in their energy needs. Okay, that is your band nine analysis and expository essay. Okay, uh, you don't have to write that. Not everybody needs a band nine, but that's what you want to do uh, to get a band nine if that's your aim. Okay, all right. Hope everybody enjoyed that class. I hope you got some really good tips on what to do and how to do. Um, if you want to get lots more tips uh, for effective essay writing, speaking, listening, reading, strategies that actually work uh, from experts, educational psychologists, uh, get our premium package at aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gltshelp.com for general IELTS. Much love back at you, Shaikh. You're very welcome, Amanjad. Thank you so much, everybody. For watching tomorrow students at the same time as today's class will have a brand new reading passage from our own materials and uh, before that members will have a question and answer session where you can ask me uh, whatever you'd like about the IELTS exam bye for now everybody see you tomorrow my name is Adrian I'm signing out from beautiful sunny Budapest <laughs>